Okay, we're gonna go uh, put the tooling set for mandrel bending on a 030 mandrel. And we're gonna start, this particular tube set's gonna be for inch and a half tube, but uh, we'll go ahead and start mounting the tools as we go. Go ahead, Dave. So, 030 mega bender, mandrel system. First thing we're gonna do is put the mandrel onto the drawbar. The mandrel threads onto the drawbar. I'm not gonna take it off just for the sake of time. But it threads onto the drawbar. Make sure it's securely fastened onto the drawbar. Uh, this is a one inch diameter drawbar. There are other drawbars for smaller tubes if you have smaller diameter tubes available. So first thing you do is thread the drawbar on, use the chucking flats, key here, make sure it's tight on the drawbar. That's the first thing I would do. Next thing I would do is mount the former. The former has a radius, in this case R76, inch and a half tube. It's going to mount on the spindle. On the bottom of the former, you're going to see a detent here. It's going to go right here. This is the former return spring. And make sure that this detent head is in this recess. So it's going to sit down on top of that. And it doesn't sit down properly at first, so we have to take a bar and just pop it over and give it to sit down on the uh, head. Okay, it just sat down nice, and now you can see former return spring springs the former back. Also, we should note, this former is R76. We have to get our table in center line of our tooling. That's adjusted here, where the table meets the bracket here, four 17 millimeter bolts to each side, hand crank to adjust it for radius, so loosen the four bolts, and you'll see an arrow indicator here right here to move this to the match the radius of your former. In this case 76, we're going to put our indicator on 76, 3 inch center line radius. When you're done, tighten the four bolts back up and you're good to go there. Next thing we're going to drop in is our clamp die. Clamp die mounts on the dovetail. It's going to drop in. Fingers are up right now on the spring catches. So we can just pull those back and drop the clamp die in. I'm going to release the springs on the fingers, the clamp fingers. So just take and hold the spring, drop it back down, and the fingers are released. We have to put our pressure die in place now. Pressure die mounts from the rear, but a bolt uh, goes through the rear of the bracket to hold the pressure die in. It's going to mount on the tang drive here. I'm going to slip that in and put the bolt from the back into the rear of the pressure die. All the hardware on this machine is six, is metric, in this case six millimeter uh, bolts secure the tooling on the machine. Make sure the bolts are tight. Okay, last thing we have to put tooling wise on the machine is our wiper die. Our wiper die, radius and size specific. So the radius is going to match the former and the size is going to match the size of your material. It's going to mount this side on the wiper bracket. Just going to drop it in here. It's got a dovetail cam lock. We're going to push in and turn and we're also going to secure with a bolt. set the wiper into the former. So the wiper radius here should blend with the radius cut of the, of the former itself. And the wiper tip should go to tangent, this tangent line on the former. That's where the bend begins. So we're going to adjust that now. And you have an XY axis here to move the wiper in or out. All right, now I'm just going to move it in to get that blend of this radius and the former. And when you're done, you should be a very small gap, consistent gap, 
of the radius of the wiper and the radius of the former, the radius groove of the former. Also a good position, good double check, is when it's in position, the wiper sits parallel to the pressure die. It doesn't have any negative rake or heel on it, so it sits parallel face to face with the pressure die. And one last check we can look at is on the back side where the radius cuts meet. There should be no daylight visible here on the wiper. And on the front side here where the wiper meets the former, it's a nice blend of the wiper tip to the former groove. And that's a good position for the wiper. Well, before we set the tie bar on, I'm going to set the clamp die switch, so I'm going to turn the pumps on. Okay. We need hydraulics for this portion of it because we're going to make the first adjustment uh, on your clamp die switch on the original so, setup. There are two settings you have to make before we set our clamp die switch. Number one, we're going to make sure that our faces, our face of our former is parallel with the face of our clamp die. And if it's not, we can use a jack screw on the back side here to adjust, which I'll show you. Loosen the jam nut. And we can take six millimeter again, adjust the face of the former. And you can see as I move the screw, it's canting the face of the former. So I want to make sure those are parallel so I have even clamping and even holding force across my tube. When I'm done, just tighten the jam nut. Okay. And release our fingers again. Okay. Now we can set our clamp die switch. We're going to come to our control panel, move the cylinder, this is loose right now, move the cylinder about a quarter inch away, face to face. Come over to your control panel, close clamps. Okay, switch box is still loose. We're going to push it forward. It's a spring load. You'll feel resistance, about 3 16 of an inch. Lock it down. Open the clamps again, just to be sure the fingers are engaging. And at this time, you can also check your clamping pressure on the gauge of the uh, table. So if you close your clamps, you can go over to your table, read your pressure on your gauge, adjust if needed. Uh, for whatever size tube you're doing. When would you mount a tie bar? Tie bar would be mounted now. Okay. Okay, well, that's it. I think we're in good shape.